the entrance antiphon. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In the third month after their departure from the land of Egypt, on its first day, the children of Israel came to the desert of Sinai. After the journey from Rephidim to the desert of Sinai, they pitched camp. While Israel was encamped here in front of the mountain, the Lord told Moses, I am coming to you in a dense cloud so that when the people hear me speaking with you, they may always have faith in you also. When Moses then had reported to the Lord the response of the people, the Lord added, go to the people and have them sanctify themselves today and tomorrow Make them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning and a heavy cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled but Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke, for the Lord came down upon it in fire. The smoke rose from it as though from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder while Moses was speaking with God and God answering him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of a mountain. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Praise and glory. 
Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, you shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. This scene in um, the reading from Exodus, where uh, Israel now is gathered around um, Mount Sinai, and the Lord says, I'm coming to you in a dense cloud. And then we have the story unfolding. This um, is an interesting text that has become a, a classic over the centuries in our Catholic spirituality of describing a certain way, uh, a certain part of what it's like to experience God. When you and I stand and, and try to pray and do our best, huh, there's a sense like this imagery of a dense cloud. We don't hear anything. We don't see anything. We can't feel anything. And inside of a dense cloud, you don't know anything. And so there's this spiritual tradition that talks about how this, um, in a sense, is insightful and helpful to us in growing in our relationship with the Lord. One of the classic writers is a 14th century, and it's anonymous author. We don't know who wrote the book. And it's called The Cloud of Unknowing. And basically from this scene is, is saying, if you want to know what it's like, you and I have to step inside the cloud where we don't know anything about God and stand before the mystery of God, stand in silence before God. Now, you and I will talk about um, our faith journey that we have to move from our head 
to our heart. And that language is uh, used a lot in our, in our tradition. And this author will talk about the same thing. He will say this, we have a way of knowing things and we can know things about God. But he says this, You'll, you and I will never understand God. And you even see in today with Jesus and the parables and stuff, uh, the, the dialogue about that. People don't get it. Huh? And sometimes you and I read the parables today and we don't get it. We're never going to be able to understand everything. But this author says, you, you and I might not ever be able to get to God through our brain, our minds, but we can always get to God through our love, through our hearts. And so this author would highlight when you and I are in the dense cloud of, of our experience, let's say you're, you have, you're struggling with something, or maybe you look at the world and watch the news and you think it's a mess and it's just chaotic and you don't understand what's going to happen and where we're going to go, and we live in the mystery and we're living in a cloud. And our love can still give us access to God. We can still reach God that way. Does that make sense? Uh, this, this to me is kind of in, um, very insightful because like this author would say, sometimes our answers get in the way of God. Have you ever felt like if I knew everything and had it all figured out, then I would live based upon, I got it figured out, I understand it now, I know what I'm supposed to do, or I know why it makes sense, and then I'm no longer in dialogue with God. I'm no longer trusting God, because I'm living on my answers. And this author says, then even our, our thinking gets in the way, becomes an obstacle. So I got this nice little quote from this, and see if you like it, and if not, you'll say, well, Tomorrow you'll get Father Moser. <laughs> Glory be to God, right? So this is what this author says about um, our intense need to understand will always be a powerful stumbling block to our attempts to reach God in simple love and must always be overcome. For if you do not overcome this need to understand, it will undermine your quest. It will replace the darkness which you have pierced to reach God with clear images of something which, however good, however beautiful, however godlike, is not God. So what he's saying is, you and I could think of have some nice image or we could know something about God and we can hold on to that as good as it is, as beautiful as it is. It's not God. And we have to abandon ourselves and it feels like a dense cloud. And in that mystery, our love, our hearts can reach him and we can be reached by him. Let us stand and lay before this God of unknowing, beyond all knowing, our cries and our needs. For vocations to the priesthood and religious, religious life, may the Lord bless the church with committed men and women. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Lord grant them every grace in addressing the many challenges their people face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with trials or crises of faith, may God assure them he is their sure hope and source of all blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of, all of us here today, may the Lord continue to bless us and guide us in our every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, a God welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven to live in his presence forever. Remember, remembering especially Pat Alex, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now take a moment in your own hearts to name your personal need.
O God, hear our cries and expand our hearts so that we may sense you and your presence and that we may serve you with love and devotion today and always as we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has, hand, has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Columkill, and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be you. The communion antiphon. The Lord, the gracious the merciful has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.